Welcome to another episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo, and I'm joined, as always, by the technician, Chris Aceto, straight from Miami, Florida, still at the NPC Nationals. Chris, uh, as you know, I'm boy- I boycotted this year's. I'm like the the uh, the Americans who used to boycott all the Olympics. I boycotted this year's NPC <laughs> Nationals. Actually, I didn't boycott the Nationals. I, I boycotted the promoter, Steve Carroll, so I didn't show up. I can't, Dave, I cannot tell you. I'm serious. I bet 20 different people came up to me and said, uh, you know, I wanted to email Steve Carroll about Dave not being here. I'm dead serious. And I said, well, you should have. Like a lot of guys did because I, I got CC'd on a lot of the emails. But I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, you could break their balls. It wouldn't It wouldn't change. They're going to get rid of Steve Carroll. They he will. He was worse than Trump. You, I will take – I feel like Howard Stern. I will take credit when they get rid of Steve Carroll. I'll say, you know what? And they can blame me. They can say, you know what? We, we Dave was right. We, we, we got rid of Steve Carroll because, uh, we, you know – He's, he's, <laughs> I had Jay, I had Jay and Mannion on the show last week. You know, we did a, oh, a retrospective. Uh, we were looking back at some of the old NPC nationals and he, <laughs> we were talking. He's like, I said, he's like, uh, they have no online registration for the show. I said, Jam, they still have a travel agent listed on, on the poster. Like as if people use travel agents anymore. What did he say to that? What did he, he say to he that? He started. He was. He was almost choked on his lunch. He was laughing so hard. We did. We talked well, about they that. Were, they were out. The, the, I didn't see any police, and I didn't see any military. But I did see Steve Carroll talking to people <laughs> individually and warning them. I don't know if he was saying, "I will steal. I will take your cell phone away." But you cannot <laughs> make a video. Oh, with so the phones? I gave to honor you. I, to honor you, I stood up as tall as I could stand and pretended <laughs> to be videoing the shows to try to get kicked out so that I could get the... And what I was going to do is, when Steve, if he did, Carol would come over to yeah. say, hey, you know, this is Russia. You can't make videos of... Uh, <laughs> you know, they do the same thing at the NFL, right? Or the Red Sox games. They kick people right out for videoing it. No, you can video. You just... You, they don't want you to have, like, those long... <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know you can. Yeah, but the, I mean, the point is, you can't stop this. Well, first of all, maybe he could have stopped everyone in the auditorium because, from what I heard, there was only about a hundred people there. Is that true? No, there, there were probably three, two, two to three hundred in the audience. Mm-hmm. There was no one there. It was expensive too. Their tickets well, are really you know what, expensive. I, I sat next to Ali Trevino, and she said, "You can go to the uh, NPC Nationals for pre prejudging and finals tickets, or for the same amount of money, go see a Drake concert in the front row." <laughs> How did, you, said, how did you get I, tickets? Because I didn't I didn't request any press passes. Did you have a client buy you tickets? Yeah, I had someone, oh. someone who wanted uh, his, uh, I had someone buy me a, a ticket. And I could have gotten your press pass, but I purposely did. I didn't want to ask for I press passes. I purposely yeah. did. I was like, screw that. I'm not, I don't want their press passes. I saw Bill Wilmore there, too. Big Bill Wilmore. Yeah. And he wanted to know where you were. And he said, you know, I mean, who's interviewing these people? Bill and I go way back, you know. We competed at the Junior Nationals together in 95. He was second. I was first. Beat him. He, meanwhile, yeah. he had a very good pro career. But that was when he was first getting started. He's a good he guy. Gave, he, he gave me a little tidbit of info uh, the Info today. He told me that the year that Phil won the USA, he won the Nationals. True. I, did, I forgot that. Do you know that the year that Phil, do you know that the year Phil won the USA, my wife won the USA in the same show? I didn't know that. Yeah, Amanda won the uh, the bodybuilding overall. That wow. Year. She's I got all the pictures. That. You know how they take the pictures the day after JM takes those? Yeah, Where no, that's what he was building was saying, you know, I won the Nationals and I'd get, you know, like, you know, like prestigious photo shoots that don't exist anymore. I mean, yeah. because the industry's changed, you know. I mean, there sure. isn't any print magazine, but it was exciting. He was telling me, you know, to get, you know, to have to set the photo shoots up. And I remember. Do the photo shoots. And then, you know, he, you know, was in demand to guest pose right away. Yeah. You know, start making some money right away. You they don't even that? have guest posers anymore. You know why? Because there's too many, there's too many divisions. They, they don't, they don't want to waste another 10, 15 minutes on a guest pose. Well, that and people like 
12 minutes after a show, usually fat as pig. So. <laughs> no, but they, I that was something fun. Like you go to a, like a local regional show, and you know, you, not only do you see your friends, but you get to see like some top pro. Now you can just go on their Instagram and see everything that they're doing already. So no one even cares about watching these well, guys. Well, that was part of Bill's spiel. Is he said, you know, the Nationals used to be. No, but think about it. You, think about it. you couldn't before social media. You didn't see anyone. So well, that was his whole point. Bill the only way you can see Dorian was to go to a guest posing that he was at. I know. You know? But outside of that, Bill was saying the prestige of the Nationals was, you know, you would go like the year he won, mm-hmm. and like Jay would be roaming around, and Vince Taylor would be roaming around the, the Nationals, and Dexter and Nasser and. You know, he said, now there's nobody around. Well, that's because Steve Carroll's promoting it. I guarantee if you got a better promoter in there and they invited a few people and, and threw out, you know, you would get people hanging out. If I was a promoter, I'd be like, hey, Jay, what do I got to do to get you to come and maybe sign some pictures and take some pictures backstage? You know, that that's that's called, you know, PR work. But Steve Carroll doesn't want to do anything. He just wants to collect his money. And he doesn't give a crap about the competitors if they get interviewed. Or, how, many, how many more nationals is Steve going to last at the I'm not. I'm not doing. Because then they'll. They'll just despite. I. I don't think he's going to be around in five. No, years. just the odds. Just the odds. Uh, the, I. The, I say two years is. I. I think he might be even be gone. Who knows? He might not even be around next year. But I. I don't know. I don't. I'm. I don't make these decisions. I just. I'm just. Does, I'll. Does I'll be boy as long as he's yeah. promoting it. I will not be at that show. I'm boycotting. Does, does he make the decision that an entry fee is three fifty? Um. I think they've all kind of uh, kind of agreed upon that. And uh, but. I'm sure he could waive the the late fees. He doesn't have to charge seven hundred dollars if you're if you're a, a day late, you know. Because no, I think it, I think it's the late fee is only five hundred dollars. Oh, <laughs> I think John Lindsay charged, used to charge a uh, double or something like that. But the point is that you know, look, if Jim Mannion said, "Hey, look, let's lower the uh, the application, you know, fee." They would at lower the application fees. So I don't I don't blame Steve Carroll for that. And and I don't and like I said, I don't have a problem with with. With promoters making money, I think that that's look, they work very hard for it. Um, but you know, if you're going to run a show of that caliber, you have to make it accessible, and you have to make it a good athlete experience. You have to do things so that the athletes enjoy the process. There's no photo shoots, like you just said, really, aside from JM shooting people uh, the day after. There's no photo shoots, so at least give these people the ability to be you know interviewed in a, in a in a press area at the show. You know, so that people feel special about the win that they made. I remember when I did the Junior Nationals back in 1995, when I won and I walked off stage, ESPN was there interviewing me. I mean, they had a, a press area set up. I mean, that was awesome. You know, so <laughs> do you remember what they inter- what they asked you? Yeah, I don't remember. I, I I have the video. I should I should see if I can hey, digitalize the video, yeah. put it up on YouTube or something. But it was great. They even had me demonstrating the poses. It was just it was it was a really good athlete experience, and that's well, you, that's what I try to do with to the interviewer how to interview you. Since you're an interview. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I don't even remember. I think um, uh, Joe Amato. Remember Joe Amato? I think he yeah, interviewed. Yeah. He was the one that interviewed me. The interesting thing though is it was a good athlete experience, and I remember that. And so when I you know, started doing RX Muscle and we started going to these shows and covering. I always wanted to make the athlete experience good for the athletes because I remembered what it was like, you know, to win shows and to be at these shows. And so here I am trying to work to, to create a good athlete experience and I'm and I got and I'm fighting, you know, the establishment at these shows, like people like Steve Carroll, to just do my job, you know, to just just to just to make the athletes feel good. It's like the truth of the matter is I'll interview all these people who won on on RX Muscle YouTube channel in the, over the next week or so, and I'll get the same amount of hits on our our site as if I was at the show. And it will and I yeah, had spent no time at the show and no money to get there. I don't need to be at shows anymore. I'm doing. I was doing this just for the athletes. You know, people think, well, he's no. I don't need to go to the shows to make money anymore. You know, it's it, different in the past. Nowadays, yeah. I can just sit home on my ass and just do you know stuff like we're doing right now, commentary stuff. And then interview the, the winners, you know, at my leisure, you know, and get the same response. But I wanted to get these people when they're emotionally charged, when they get off stage, to get the person after they get off stage and have to walk six miles with them to the, the to the uh, you know to the parking lot is not is not a good athlete experience, you know. That's not a good athlete experience. Well, we we have interviewed people. I've held the camera for you. We had to interview them. Uh, across the street, or like no, you know, I know that's the, that. I'm not doing that anymore. I don't care. I don't need to. I used to in the past how to do, it, but I don't have to do it anymore. So if no one, if the if the promoters don't want it, you know, open their you know 
allow us to do what we need to. When I go to New York Pro, Steve, Steve Weinberg lets me do whatever I want wherever I want because he knows it's a good athlete experience and that's important. And you know why he knows that? Because he's married to Bev Francis. They were married for how many years and they went to Miss Olympias and they are athletes. She was an athlete. She knows what it, what the athletes want. And so he has a he's in touch with that aspect of, of bodybuilding, and I think it's important. Jim Mannion's the same way that they give you free carp lunch at the Pittsburgh shows and all those shows. So it's it's sad that that you know, you know they still have some promoters in there that are from the old regime, but you know they'll be out of there eventually. Time so, time yeah. time wins all all battles. But let's let's get to the nationals. I don't want to I don't want to belligerent this. We've talked I, I about this you, too much. I got told though. I want to get the. I told you I got told at the nationals. You got what? I got towed, T-O-W-E. Oh, you did? I didn't know that. I didn't understand yeah. what you were talking about. They towed your car? Yeah, I listen, I I, I tried to cheap. I, I, I was off to like, I'm not going to spend a lot of money. Well, yeah, Chris, but, you know what, what? Tell them what they spend, that they charge to park in that stupid hotel parking lot. I don't know. I, I just avoided it. But it's expensive. Across, it's like 30 or 40 no, bucks one, a day. The one across the street used to be like five or like, like four hours, 10 bucks. Now it's like, you know, one hour, 12 bucks. So I found it. Uh, I said I'm going to park in a meter. What and a, what I a cre- the- are you nuts? You, yeah, yeah. You so you I, don't I, keep keep track of time is worse than I can't keep track of time. I, I said I have an iPhone. I don't have a BlackBerry anymore, so I set my alarm clock. So you're going, going to run out meter. there and keep feeding the meter? No, no. I get the you can you can you can use your phone to to you know oh. use okay. the app and, and pay for it. So oh, okay. I I I'm parked for like four or five hours, and I come out, and now it's dark. And I can't find the car, the rental car. And there's, a, I'm thinking, did I park on Second Avenue or Second <laughs> Street crazy, or man. Northwest Second Street or Southeast Second Street? You're for punishment. Southwest. You know, so I'm walking, 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 walking. After like an hour of walking, I'm realizing, oh my goodness, my phone is going to die. I think my car is stolen. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to call anyone if my car is stolen. So right. I, I, I get an Uber. Oh my God. And That's I tell funny. the guy, drive up down up and down every street with a two in it so if it's two southeast two southwest two northwest two southwest oh, drive up it i'm gonna find this damn car and then i i couldn't find it and i realized i i had noticed a store a shoe store and i said i parked right in front of that store right and there's meters there Ugh. and then it says Thursday in small print. Thursday, Friday, four to six. No parking. Totally. <laughs> I'm laughing at you because you deserve it for cheaping out. I. Uh, that's what. That's exactly why. You know what? That's why I wasn't so upset. I said, you know what? I could have been killed in an accident. Right. Uh, well, I had I my computer stolen last year, so that, that you're still doing that. better than I'm doing. You know. So I, I said, you know what? That's what you get for cheaping out. And so I took the Uber, stayed in the Uber. They took me. I called. There's no sign, so I have to call like the, the Miami Police Department. I said, "This right. is my address. Why, you know, where right. do I go?" They sent me to like a twenty dollar cab right away, and I, I got the car and I was able to retrieve it. But and, that was and, the they, first and time then you had to probably park in the, in the, in the lot anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, I had to park in the lot. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. How much did the whole fiasco cost you, all told? Well, the the toe was one seventy five, and <laughs> the next- I'm sorry, I'm laughing. You deserve it. I do, I do. I You're do. dumb. But this is the reason why I I don't know why they hold this nationals at this idiotic fucking show downtown Miami. It's the stupidest place. It's so expensive. Everything you do there, every time you turn around, someone's either picking your pocket or 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 they're asking you for money, fucking for something. It's yeah, nuts it's, to do it there. So you know what I didn't realize is I'm, I'm driving the next day and I'm, I see mm. this little tag flying, like it's flapping nuts. under the windshield. And when I pull over, I, I I'm thinking that must be the like when I went to the tow place where the, the, the guy put something on my window to know where I park because there's all these towed cars. Yeah. And then I I you know I pull it out from under the windshield thinking it has some like something from the towing company and yeah. it's a a parking ticket from the city of Miami. So oh, I so had a ticket on top of that. Yeah, I had a $46 ticket on top of that. <laughs> so the ticket the ticket and the tow cost about two twenty three combined, and then, of course, it's $200 or the cost of a Drake concert to go watch the show. Yeah, yeah. thank God you didn't have to pay for the and ticket. And then I tried to video. You'd think, you know, I just paid $200 a park and $200 for a ticket. Can I video this show? And, you know, the promoter wants to steal your iPhone from you. The, the funny thing is, if Jimmy Pelletti would have told that story, 
you and I would have probably pissed our pants because he would have been going nuts on, on well, everywhere he's turning to taking money out of his fucking wallet. Yeah, well, I did too, but I, you know, I do that. I rationalize and say, you know what, my, I learn. I always do this. I learned a lesson. Right. You, can, by being cheap, you can spend a fortune. Yep. Yep. Do never cheap out when you go to these shows. It's not worth yeah. the aggravation. No. It's not worth it. And then on top of that, I, you know, you should have just, the- you should have just done what I did. You should have just boycotted the show and not gone, and you would have saved a fortune. Think about how much but, money you would have saved. Well, I, I thought the car might have been. I know I want to say I, I, you know, I, I just wanted to come down to Miami and hang in the condo for a while. That was the whole. Excuse yeah, you should have stayed at the condo. You shouldn't have gone to the show. That that would have <laughs> said. You should have come and driven over to. You should have come to the Cape Coral, driven to Maine, stayed with me. <laughs> we would have had a better time. To, you know what? We could have. Yeah, just I made fun of wife, people. Said you. You sound like you're down. I said, well, if Dave was here, we would have had fun. That's right. That's right. I went to let you park in the. In the, in the, in the I would have made you park in the garage. The the point is, you could have just driven to Cape Coral. We could have just hung out the whole day, and we would have had a way better of a time. I'm sure. Well, you know what? What's so funny is I told the guy who I'm helping in the show staying at that hotel. I I said, you know, I texted him, and I was in a bad mood. I said, the only way I'm coming to look at you is if you come down and pay for my family. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pull up and have no, you know, I don't want to be told. Yeah. The funny thing is that by not going to the show, I actually saw my, I was talking and, and conversing and looking at my athletes' photos and videos a thousand times more with more attention because I wasn't distracted by the show. So every like hour I had them sending me pictures. I was, you know, looking at their diet. I was doing, it was great. I was, I had about 10 people on the show and they all, you know, I, I was able to, you know, basically administer to them way better than when I'm at the show. Cause when, you know, yeah. when I'm at the show, I'm so wrapped up in commentary and all the people asking us a million questions, getting, you know, escorted out by police and all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's talk about Hunter Labrada, the son of Lee Labrada. Uh, wins the overall, the super heavy class. You know, the funny thing about Hunter Labrada, and I've had him on the TV show, is that you would think that coming from Lee Labrada, who was a middleweight, that, you know, his son would probably be a middleweight, right? Or maybe like yeah, heavyweight. Right. He's a that super is- heavy, this kid, and he's actually tall. <laughs> like Lee. Yeah, his mom, well, his, you know, the- Lee's much shorter than his wife. No, I know. So she must have better genetics than than, than Lee has. I think Lee told me he was the only one in his family who was short. I don't think the rest of his family is short. Just like Lee was short, but I got they they look a lot alike the two of them. Yeah, a yeah, lot alike. Yep. You know, facially, I'm seeing. And uh, you know, another gen, another generation. I, now we have to see Hunter versus uh, Sergio on stage, right? Oh, yeah. That's the battle. I'll walk on that. Right, I'm sure Sergio would uh, love that. You'll, you'll see that before you see Phil versus Roden, by the way. <laughs> probably, you're probably right. So, all right. So, how good was Labrada, and what did he deserve to win? I, I, that's what I'm waiting to hear. Yeah, he deserved to win because he's uh, he, in terms of winning the the actual overall of the class, the whole the whole thing, the whole shebang. Yeah, because, because he's 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 bigger, you know, he's bigger than the 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 heavy and the light heavy through the back. He's bigger through them than them in the legs. And that's enough. Just that alone, you know. Now, I heard that, and I, I don't, you know, I'm not saying this to, to put anyone down, but I heard the light heavyweight class was pretty, pretty bad. Is that, I mean, the light heavy, excuse me, the super heavyweight class was really bad. Is that? Um, yeah, I would say it was pretty bad. I mean, it just, you know, I, I saw Bill Wilmore, like I said there, and I said, Bill, um, would you know, I, he wouldn't let me finish sentences. I said, you know, when you win the, when you won the Nationals top five, how would it be against this top five? It sounds so like from coming from me or you, it sounds like there's a chip on the shoulder, but he said, we, we'd crush this class, you know. You know, the year the year I helped Chris, Chris Cook, it was Chris versus him, and there were like four other people too, you know. It's not like it was just him and Chris. It just happened to be those two who stuck out. Right. But they would have, um, you know, they would have won this class. Yeah, like, it's, it's, most likely, most likely. That's not to say hunters, hunters, you know, not a slouch, but um, and not that he didn't deserve to win because he did. But you know, the depth of the class uh, was short. But the depth of the bodybuilding class compared to the depth, as I told you, of the board shorts, because I always it was that wait, wait, board shorts is what physique. I'm going to get it right. Physique, men's physique, yeah, men's physique. Men's physique had the most amount of depth, and had men's physique had the most amount of quality, without a doubt. 
which is crazy if you think about it. But you know, the guys oh. don't have to be the guys don't have to be as big. So I, look, bodybuilding is tougher. We know that. So it's always you're always going to have more depth in in a class where you don't need to be as big because now you're you're, you're including way more people in the pool. Bodybuilding is is a is a sport of elimination. You you eliminate a lot of the competition because guys just can't get that big. They can't get that ripped. You know, it, it, it's really a, it's a superlative division, you know, of superlative people. Even, I mean, classic is, is fun to watch and the guys look great, but they're they're not that big. Bodybuilding sure. requires a lot of time. So I take my hat off to every single guy in that lineup. Even if it was a weaker, super heavy class than we're used to seeing, it was, you know, and maybe the guys structurally are not as good because maybe some of the structurally gifted guys are going to classic, but... You know, the bodybuilders, you know, have to put a tremendous amount of time into this because of the fact that they do need to put on that exercise. Now, um, you know, when you see the super heavies walk out there, is it is it is it a question of that guys are not in shape? What 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 was what struck you as like the most, you know? The I thing- mean, just well, you know, um, imbalances. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what strikes me the most: imbalances. Like, you know, Hunter one on. You know, I, I mentioned he's got big legs and big back, but he's got big everything, mm-hmm. and he's got balance. Um, and then after that, you know, people are missing something. You know, everyone's missing something, and that's that's, you know, I mean, look at Sean Roden. You know, he's Mr. Olympia because, you know, he might he's not missing a lot of things. Right. You know what I mean? Even though some people would say he is. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, there's people in the supers are missing development in different areas and you can't you know the, the the number one thing that holds you back as a bodybuilder is when you have weaknesses gaps in your physique right and you know maybe you know because the super heavyweight class of course is 225 that's a big weight and up you get bigger guys taller guys it's hard to fill in those gaps versus someone who's like Lee Priest's height you know so um, that's how I saw the supers. I mean, I, 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 you know, did Lebrana deserve to win the overall? Yeah. Did he deserve to win the class? Yep. Was it a weak, weaker class? Yes. I don't think anyone would disagree and say that it was, you know, a weaker class because otherwise they'd have to say it was a great, you know, super strong class. And that's right. The, well, I just I'm looking at the, I look at the guys. I look I'm looking at all the pictures, and obviously I wasn't there. So when I I, I take pictures with a grain of salt, but. I see guys that are in really good shape in that super heavy top five, yeah. but I just don't. But I see very weird structures. Yeah, that's oh. it. That's it. I mean, there's people with you know. I mean, there were people with good shape, but there's just you know gaps in the physique and you know structures. You know, but that's it. You nailed it. You know, yeah. So I mean, and I think I think we are losing a lot of the structurally gifted guys to classic. I think we're going to see okay. it even more in the next five years, probably. Yeah, without a doubt. How was the heavyweight? I know Michael Toscano was uh, overcame a lot of obstacles to get here, and this guy has uh, been working his butt off, so to speak. Uh, we have some mutual friends. Uh, how did you feel that he looked in that? Did he I have a chance he, at the overall? Um, I thought he would. He did until I saw him next to Hunter, and just Hunter was, you know, thicker through for sure, thicker through the legs, thicker mm-hmm. through, um, uh, thicker through the back. Um, and that that made it pretty much a slam dunk. It's thicker through the arms, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Toscano had uh, good condition and uh, tremendous back double bicep, very good back lat spread. Weird. I thought he was in great condition, or very very good condition, very very good to great. And in the lineup from the front, he did not look that hard, which was weird because it didn't look like he was holding water or not in shape either that or he was just so much tighter from behind right that um that there was a discrepancy from the front that said i mean he's improved a lot i mean i i remember seeing him like three years ago and thought oh that guy's got good structure he's wide yeah thinking you know is, is he gonna be able to fill the frame out and a lot of times you see people and you think They'll never fill that frame out, and he's filled the frame, his frame out, and I thought he was uh, for sure like the winner in the class. Hmm. I see uh, Phil Vizicaro was fourth place in that heavyweight class. Yep. Uh, he was shredded, huh? Yeah, yeah, he was shredded, um, in good shape. He, you know, he had uh, he was a little gassed on on the posing, meaning 
you know, he's breathing heavy through the prejudging, which was surprising because, you know, sometimes when people are out of shape, they have a hard time going through the mandatory. Right. Um, and I think that cost him a position. Hmm, interesting. Uh, okay. You know, because he was um, in good enough shape to place higher, but he didn't show what he really had because, you know, when you're breathing heavy and you can't, like, stand to your best, you can't keep your legs tight. Sure, yeah. Um, I think that's kind of, like, hurt him a little bit. Was it was the excitement? That, I remember when we used to watch the NPC Nationals, and you'd see all the guys come out. I mean, they, they, this was a pretty stacked. I mean, there's a lot of guys in the lineup, and I remember seeing them line up, and you're like, "Oh, look, it's so and so, and it's so and so and so." It was the palpable excitement there when you saw the heavy classes go out there, and yeah. everyone's like talking. No, 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 no. no. Was no, there any no, no. was there any press there even covering the show? I mean, aside from uh, just the people with their confiscated iPhones. <laughs> No, there were, I don't know if there was any, you know, some Instagram sites or something. Who knows? I don't know. I, I mean, I know NPC News always has, you know, their coverage. I, I probably, I imagine Blackman had someone there, but uh, probably not. Very oh, no, no, did he? I'm sure Ron was probably there or something like that. But it's, but, I mean, it's not it the same. Yeah, it's yeah, not the it same. Was, it was the interesting thing, too, is, and you tell me if I'm wrong. Because I had this long conversation. It wasn't forced with Bill Wilmore. Yeah. For people who are like juveniles to the sport, Bill Wilmore uh, won the Nationals in 90, uh, 2005, right? 2004, 2005, 2006, somewhere in that age. Yeah. 2005, he won it. And, you know, I said, Bill, don't you remember like, you know, a top five where it was either always this so-and-so is going to win, and we have no clue who's going to be second, third, fourth, or fifth because they're so close. <laughs> right. Or nobody knows. Nobody knows it's so close. Right? Yep. And it would be like that every year, so you would have to, like, you know, get on a hotel phone and find out. You got pl- do you hear anything? Is Plumbo in third, fourth, eighth, fifth, sixth? And, well, and- I mean, we have social media now, but, the, but, the, but I remember when before shows, we would be able to do, it like, a prediction show because we knew who was going to be there from the year before. Um, we could say, oh, so-and-so, Wilmore's going against this guy and, and that guy, and, 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 and I don't know who's going to get it. And We don't know who's going to be. From year to year, you don't know who's going to be in the show. Um, Labrada basically pulled a Cody Montgomery. I mean, he just kind of just held out until he was ready to win, and he did the juniors this year, and then he did the uh, – he did the Nationals and got his pro card the first shot. I mean, that that's pretty damn good. And now, from what I from what I hear, he's going to take the year off next year, and he's going to compete at the 2020 New York Pro to try to do what his dad did, which was, I guess, win his pro debut right at New York. Uh huh. Yeah, he needs the year off. That would be that's a good move. I think. I think it's a good show, good pro debut. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see. You know, I think that. Uh, I think he's got a bright future. He's only 26 years old. He's still growing, you know. It's not like he's 36 years old. Yeah. He could yeah. uh he could he make a lot of improvements still over the Yeah, no, he could definitely make improvements. He's, he's uh his biggest flaw is um wide hips. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't have his dad's teeny tiny waist like that. Yeah. But yeah. Lee Lee was a was a master of really angling. You know, he was—he knew how to hit the different angles to make his physique look as good as possible. I think Lee posed and made himself way better than people really understood because he wasn't a big guy on stage. No, no, he wasn't. That, no, he was 176 when he won the national. <laughs> and what, but what do you think he, when he won when he was winning pro shows? What was he like 180 maybe? I mean, <laughs> I mean 185 maybe. 185, 185. Yeah, yeah. wasn't he? Wasn't he? Was definitely the smallest guy up there. But he was such a good poser. Presentation was so good, you know. So you almost got kicked out for videotaping, huh? Well, I tried to. <laughs> I, I people get me and talk to, so I said, "Let no. me just flaunt my arrogance and <laughs> stand on the top of my seat and take out my iPhone and try I love to." It. I love it. What did you think about the light heavy class? You know, I helped the guy who came in fifth, Frank Manorino. I told you. I told you. Yeah. I know you thought you like you, you liked him for the win. Well, in prejudging, I thought he looked spectacular, and I, you know, you know, he definitely, in my opinion, did not get the solid call out so it would make mm-hmm. him a strong contender for first, or second. So yeah. I'm sure he ate after prejudging and was definitely watery the second day. He was really okay. I, 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 I 
Try to bring him in a little fuller, but I think it might. He's such a short guy that I think it's he's probably better sucked out. When he had to make weight, like he had to make weight because he was like a heavyweight the week before uh, in the show, he didn't. He had, he had to make weight. He he was like, you know, I pulled a an aceto, I like diuretic him, and I gave him, you know, no food. I starved him. He actually looked really good <laughs> when he weighed in. I'm like, man, Frank, this is a pretty good look for you. Maybe we should just bring you in with like no food, you know? Well, sometimes, you know what? Sometimes no food is best, yeah. right? For guys that are like short, you know, sometimes they look. You can't really, dip, you can't really make a short guy look flat. You know? No, 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 they can't, they can't, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> you can't do it. So, but uh, yeah, he's he's a work in progress. He's just getting started. Um, what'd you think of the guy who won the class, the uh, uh, Devon Bartley? Yeah, I, I thought he was um, pretty complete. <clears throat> um, you know, he was hard. Um, yeah, he was he was hard. He was hard. His side chest was very hard. Side tricep was hard. His condition was actually better than the pictures are showing. I'm looking at really? pictures. Yeah, yeah. He, so. he looks like his legs might be a little a little on the uh, maybe not as big side from the front. I don't know. From the back and sides, they look pretty all right. Yeah, but 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 I I don't think his condition really shows up, and that's why he won that class. Mm. I think the the condition looks better in real life than it does in the pictures. Right. I uh, I like to see new talent come out there. I'm not really a, a f- familiar that familiar with him, so I think he has a really you know good physique. I think uh, he's the kind of guy that probably could have done classic too. <laughs> time I it, if he could have made the weight class. Yeah. What about the middles? Any anyone uh, any standouts? Francisco Morato wins. Francisco Morato. Let me see what he looked like. Uh... Very good condition. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He won on condition. He was in very good condition. Very good condition. Like very. A lot of density, no weak body parts, um, per se. You know. Yeah. He was just harder than everyone. Let's let talk. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, men's classic physique a little bit because uh, I, I was looking at some of the pictures. I was like pretty amazed. Travian Daniels. Uh, Travian. Okay, but, what, what class, Dave? Because he was, won class A and he won the overall. Okay. Yeah. He. Um, really freaky looking guy. Yeah. 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 He looked. Really good, um, complete, full, hard. Uh, looks like a throwback bodybuilder, you know. Yeah. Meaning, you know, a lot of detail, a lot of separation. Um, you he know, he look good. He's got like he clean good. muscle. He looks like he almost looks like you know, look, like like I was an just athlete. Gonna say, you know? Dave, I'm just going to use the word clean. I was going to say, you know, he has clean looking muscle that just looks like it's not you know muffined up. Jimmy Dobb. <laughs> um, looks like he's not pushing things, you know, his body where his body doesn't want to be pushed. And it comes out with a cleaner look. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I think there's, I think, and this, this wasn't the way until recently. I think that there's a big gap now between the amateur classic and the pro classic. I don't think any of these guys can go into the pros and, and do damage anymore, which is the no. way it used to be. Right. No, I don't either. Hundred percent. Right, the pros have gotten so much better. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the guys who won. I'm like, eh, I don't think these guys can can do any. I don't think they would do any damage in no. uh, in the pro ranks. I think they're going to take a couple of years to have to really you know work themselves into that. Matter of fact, I think a lot of the bodybuilders who maybe won the middleweight class, the welterweight, I think those guys will do more damage in the in the classic if they decide to switch over when they get to the pros. Which, which a lot of them will. Yeah. That's, that seems to be what's going on. You see a lot of the middleweights. Middleweights seem to be able to... They make a certain weight, but they're for their height, a lot of times they fit into that classic division pretty well. You know. True. True. You're right. And uh, they wind up doing that. They switch and... Look what... You know, Santi Aragon switched. Uh, with the, the Brian Ansley was a bodybuilder switched. He's Mr. Olympia now. Yeah. What do you think of? Uh, look at the next class, Class B. Lamar, uh, Sean, Sean Lamar. He's yeah. got a very classic looking physique. Sean Lamar. Yeah, I looked at him before, and he's got like the teeny tiny waist. Um, he looks like I, I can't tell from the picture, but he looks like he's a good poser. I don't know if he was. Oh, best best one of the better posing routines of the really? night in the show at $300 a pop. <laughs> um, yeah, no, 
thought his routine was really good. Just uh, knew how to compliment, which very few people do know how to do. Mm -hmm. Knew how to compliment and blend his physique to the music that he was posing to. Saw so many routines where people do the Matarazzo. Uh, and I, I want to like throw up when I watch. Most of the routines are so boring that I, I, I usually literally fall asleep during the, the routines. Well, they're not a routine. They're not a routine. Just because you're on a stage is not a routine. It's, a, <laughs> it's, it's like a guest posing. It's not even a guest pose. It's just like an embarrassment. How long did they let him How pose now for? Pose down? No, the posing. What are the routines? They used to be like, remember that when I competed and you competed, they were like two and a half minutes. Now they probably got to be like, what, 45 seconds? <laughs> you, you actually got tired. You had to do such a long routine, you know? Yeah. Well, no, people people would never, people with, with Instagram, people don't, and, and text message, and people don't have the capacity to pay attention for two no, and a half minutes. No, no, absolutely the not. The athlete and the audience. <laughs> Arturo Mendez wins the Class C, and uh, Abner Logan wins the Class D. So, a lot of pro cards given out. I'll tell you that much. This was the show to do if you wanted to get a pro card. I think they yeah. gave out. Uh, uh, they gave two per class, right? So that was a lot of a lot of pro cards they gave out. Yeah. Figure was one, but overall Tiffany Walker. I actually helped. I actually got to uh, help the figure girl who won a, a pro card. Devin Wynn. Uh, wife of my good friend uh, Blaine Hare, she was second in Class A. Congratulations to her getting that pro card. But Tiffany Walker won the overall. She was really good. She was the Class B winner. She was. Uh, she looks like she'll be on the Olympia stage in a year or two. <laughs> She's got one of those physiques. Uh, bikini was won by uh, Alexandria Blair. You know, I got to say something about bikini. I helped a bunch of bikini girls in the show. Yeah, yeah I did. I actually have a, a, I have a pretty decent contingency of uh, bikini competitors. Those girls are hardcore. They train hard, man, and they and they want to diet hard. And I, I love working with them. To be honest with you, they they don't whine. They don't complain about anything. And I don't. I, to be honest with you, I don't even know how they judge. Some of the girls they want hard. Some of the girls. Some of the classes were soft. It's it's frustrating a little bit. I, 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 I think there's too many girls. I think there's so many girls in the show that they don't know what they, the judges don't know what to even look at it anymore. Look, Helly, I sat next to Helly Trevino, mm -hmm. uh, which we didn't go to the Drake concert for two hundred dollars. We spent our money <laughs> on uh, being towed and uh, going to this show. Yeah. And Helly said, "What are they looking for? Or how do they judge this division?" It's tough. And I, and I, I think she's from Denmark. I said, yeah. what's the national dish of Denmark? She said, like, pork chops. <laughs> and I said, well, if, if we were going to a pork chop judging contest, you know, of the best pork chop in Denmark, uh -huh. we would have to taste all the same basic dishes made of pork chops. So, I mean, once you've had one, how do you distinguish between one yeah. tasty dish and the nineteenth tasty dish, and it's the same thing with bikini. It's like you got nine, you know, class B, four hundred girls in it. I mean, how do you make the distinction uh, between this is four hundred and four? You're right, and that and that's the problem. So you have your head judge, Sandy, you know Williamson, who's been judging forever. She's she knows what she's doing, but she has a certain look that she likes, you know, obviously. And when she now she doesn't the head judge score doesn't count, but the head judge picks the top five, you know, to come out on stage. And then the other judges judge what she calls. So it's it's basically her, she's picking the top five and then the, the, the rest of the judges are just confirming which places those five girls are going to go in first, second, third, or fourth. And even still, she kind of lines them up too. So she kind of, so the head judge kind of, even though she doesn't score, her, her score doesn't count, she's lining them up. So, you know, Depending on who the head judge is, you're going to see different, you know, looks. You know, I bet you if Steve Weinberger head judges some of the bikini, you're going to get a more, you know, athletic look, you know, than Sandy because Steve's obviously comes from a bodybuilding background. So that's why I don't. I tell a lot of these girls that maybe don't do well that maybe should have. I say don't don't get upset because you can do another show and you're going to get completely judged differently because bikini is harder to differentiate figure if you have a small waist and you're in good shape and you have good shoulders and you're going to do well right men's bodybuilding we know if you have enough if you have size and conditioning those are easy classes bikini's harder because there's not like you said there's not that many distinguishing nuances to the to these girls physiques that really set them apart 
maybe if you have a really beautiful girl up there um, who really stands out with a great, you know, charismatic personality. That's why I tell these a lot of these girls that they like look like miserable up there. You know, one of the girls I have, I said, you got to smile up there a little more. It's like you're having a good time because these judges are influenced by that. And and once again, you're you're not going to win the class because your biceps are bigger than the other girls. That's not how bikinis judged. You know, exactly. So I I do feel bad. So I feel bad for the girls because and it's not anyone's fault. It's just it's just a very subjective division because there's not that many distinguishing like you pointed out distinguishing factors that sets these girls apart. Um, men's physique was won by Jamal Hill, and I know you were very impressed by the by uh, by him. Yeah, I'm always impressed by so many people in the in the men's physique. Yeah. I mean, there was a, there was a lot of depth, a lot of in the top five, truly uh, impressive conditioning. There mm. was there was just so many people who are like in shape. You know, when you start watching the show and you and uh, for me, two hundred dollars seat, and you, you, uh, <laughs> and and then you start wondering, like, I wonder what he did for his diet. Then you you're impressed, you know what yeah. I mean? Because that's what I do. My mind wanders. I'm like, I wonder what he ate. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I'm like, and then I do this. He must have done like four hours of cardio. And then I would do this. No, he must have done like high fat, low carb. And then I said, <laughs> no, to get that lean, he had to have done like high carb, very low fat. You know, and then. My mind, you know, goes all over the place. Yeah, I'll tell you who I was impressed with in the uh, in this show. Who was a clear cut winner? I think the women's physique overall woman, woman, oh, yeah. winner, oh, yeah. Ashley yeah. Bader. Wow, she's good. Very popular. No relation to Bader, but die by the way. That's the yeah. last thing. Well, I, I mean, he could make claim because he's had like a you know. Dry I, don't think, I don't think they let women in the gym over there, right? Well, <laughs> I don't think they let him on RX Muscle Radio. Where was his interview? He reached Where, out. What? Well, he reached out to us, and he wanted to let he let Bader Badai let us know because there was a rumor that that uh, Rami wanted to go move back to, to Kuwait. Did you hear that? No, I know what Rami's doing, but go ahead. Maybe you can you can clarify. Well, this is what I was told by Bader. Sid was told by Bader that Rami wanted to come back to Kuwait, and they told him no. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Yes. No. You on our terms. Yes. On your terms. No. But go ahead. <laughs> What's the truth? No, keep going. That's I that's all I heard. Yes, because I'm a great guesser. I'm a great guesser. That's all I heard. He's holed up in Dubai. Good guess. <laughs> yeah. And Hanny's on the phone every day with him. Oh, really? I'm. That's a guess, but it's a damn good guess. I want to. I want to. If you can get the address for me when I go to Dubai next month, I, I will just show up at Rami's front doorstep. Yeah. The, what do you mean? The, with a fishing on, pole. When is the show? It's oh the, yes, it's December eighth yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I get there a day before. I'll go to his house with a fishing pole, and Rami and I will go fishing like buddies. We won't even talk bodybuilding. I'll say, Rami, get your pole. You can, you, you get be, your pole. You could be, be like the girl. Who's the lady who interviewed uh, Whisper in my ear where they were on like live TV? Barbara Walters. No, no, it was the Asian lady. Uh, Connie Chung. I don't know. Connie Chung. She was interviewing someone years ago. And she asked someone a question, and the person didn't answer. And she said, "Well, just and they were, the cameras were on them. Whisper it in my ear. <laughs> you can ask him a personal question, and he won't answer." I don't even want to. I just wanted. I'm just gonna get my pole. I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna be like Rami, grab your fishing poles, I, get the bait. Let's get on a boat. Let's go fishing. We'll have a couple. Of the we'll bring a bottle of wine. After a couple of drinks, Rami will be uh, talking English to me, and uh, we'll we'll find out what's going on. That's that's it. Oh, I, <laughs> one, Rami doesn't drink at night. Two, I think he uses a fishing net, and not a pole. Oh well, see, I, what do I know about fishing? I don't know anything. Maybe Rami will show me how to fish. I'll just show up and say, "All right, Rami, take me on one of your fishing boats you got." And uh, we may have to go to Egypt for that. That's the only problem because I think his fishing boats are in Egypt. They're probably not in Dubai. So, so he. So he left the country, and then he wanted to come back, and then Beta said, "No, you can't come back." Why right? No, you can't come back. Yeah, that, that's what that's Beta's story that he's the, that he's. Well, told okay, said. ask him why he couldn't come back. They don't want to take him back. I guess I don't know. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe he didn't listen to them. That's what you know. No, we don't want him. Well, well two, two, you promised two years in a row. I never promised, actually, but I don't understand why he's not he's not calling you to, to hire him again. Because I, told, I already because he, he's because he's because now he's having a breakdown. But go ahead. Oh, so maybe he will then. 
No, he's got because he's got a million people in his ear, and and. Uh, I, you know what? If I was trying to figure out what to do, I would go to the person who's not in my ear because those people are just self-serving. They're trying to cash well, in that's on my whole point. the cash that's why cow. I'm right. So, so and every maybe. time he goes with the money and the people who are supposed to <laughs> promising him the world, he seems to d- d- self-destruct, right? Yeah. He, well, should, he should just say, fuck everyone. Who do I feel the most comfortable with? I don't know. It might not be you. I don't know. Maybe it is you. You guys seem to have a friendship. Let me go with him. Who cares? I don't care what people say. I don't care what people are, are telling me about what he's doing with me. I'm going to put my trust into Chris Aceto. I'm going to work with him. I feel comfortable. I have a, a friendship with him. And I don't care what anyone else says. That That's what he needs. Either that or he should do it alone. You know, and, if, and, if I can predict that Phil is not competing and I'm already right, then I can predict that Hanny will be working with Phil and I'm already already right on that. That's two for two. You might. Phil, yeah, he needs a new Phil. So that, that's why he's going after um, Rami, I'm sure. Yeah. But that's the worst thing. See, although, you know, I will say one thing for Hanny. Hanny probably would be good for, good for for Rami because he would be constantly calling him like 600 times a day. But but the, the bottom line is that... Rami needs someone who's not there for because they're trying to benefit themselves. Um, well, that's 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 called life, dude. Everyone's in it. No, but you're. Good. I'll tell you why you're good in that sense because you don't give a shit. You don't need the I money. Really care. You I don't. Really you don't need the money. You do it because you really look. You do it because you really love the sport. That's why you do it, and and that's what he needs. You know, other people don't need what you what you have, but he, Rami needs that because. You don't have a million athletes. You, you know, you, you you like you like him. You have a relationship with him. That that's important for him because he obviously has too many people telling him what to do. You know, he needs to have one person who's like a tyrant, like you are. Maybe I'll be like Bader and say you can't come back. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna listen. He's gonna call you up. He's be like, okay, Chris, can you, and you'll be like, sorry, I can't take you back. <laughs> And you know he listens. I know he's listening. I I love Rami. I know they listen. Believe I know, me. but you know, yeah, you know, you know Rami. I'm I'm I'm, decla- you know what? I'm 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 not gonna say anymore. That make this like pretend that not everyone listens because everybody and their brother tells me they listen to the show. Yeah. Even the people, I'm just like, you listen to the show? Why? You know what they say? It's funny. I'm like, it's funny. How is it funny? <laughs> or they or they insult me. They says. Well, it's not real. I see. I hear this a lot too from people. I don't really like it. I listen to the show. I don't really like it, but I got to do cardio. Yeah, I just want to hear what these guys are going to say. That's, that's the old Howard Stern adage. No, but you know, I I, I love Rami, and I know that he loves the show, and I'd love to like I I'd love to have like a more in depth conversation with him. I always get luckily, you know, if I get him at the Olympia or something like that, I always get these like. Dude, I I, I been listen. He's been in the Olympia since 2013, and he's never done an interview. We got him that one time. Remember, didn't it cost him like three I months' know, salary? Him, like, <laughs> didn't he lose oh, like three months' pay from AMI or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell people what happened. You, you, he, you know, was like I didn't AM, even know. He, I didn't even. I didn't everyone. even know he was on the contract with them. And I interviewed with him, and evidently he didn't know he couldn't do an interview. And so, I guess he got in trouble for interviewing with us, and he um, he lost a couple months' pay. I think, right? He didn't care. It didn't matter to him. But no, but so to, to look at 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Nobody's done an interview with him. I'll get him. I'll get him. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, think, maybe I, maybe after I, listening to this, he'll call you up I, and you you I, will accept him back. And once you accept him back, then you can tell him to meet up with me in Dubai, and we'll meet in like a we'll go to a little like I don't know some out of, off the off the uh, beaten path like restaurant or something like that and. I'll interview him there or something like that. Or I'll go to his house. I don't care. Go to his house. Do you know where he's living there? No, I just know Dubai. Oh. I'll find out because that's without asking people. They just tell me. Maybe he's living with the, uh, the, the, the uh, what is it, the, the, the sheik there. The sheik really uh, is into bodybuilding there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The guy who runs the, owns the country there. Owns the country. <laughs> I met him. I think it's the same guy. I think I met this that guy in 96. You probably I'm like, I'm, there's been no coup since, so you know right. that you know that he actually bought this guy. You know they have like the best of the best. They he got into snakes for a while, and he bought two like reticulated pythons from Bob Clark, who's one of the top you know breeders of, of reticulated pythons. Bob Clark, <laughs> he, he charged him like a, I think like a ridiculous amount of money for these snakes, and they were full grown. He wanted full grown ones, and he. Bob Clark packed them up. I don't know. He got all the permits. He flew from Oklahoma, where he's from, to, to Dubai. 
this is a true story. He gets to Dubai with the snakes, right? He ships them through the airport and everything like that. He's all the permits. Probably takes him. It's probably a nightmare to, to go through all this stuff, all the paperwork and everything like that. He gets the snakes at the airport. Gets a car, whatever. Drives to the guy's house. Comes to the palace. Arrives with the snakes. The guy's like, I don't want them. <laughs> It's like, what do you mean you don't want him? He goes, you got to take him. I brought him here from the United States. He's like, all right, fine. <laughs> I had I had to consult with you this week in terms of uh, snakes and apartments. Somebody wanted to rent an apartment, right? You did. And you and said, I, what did, did I send you the Craigslist response or did I just ask you about the snake? No, you said, what about, you think is a ball python okay for, uh, yeah, for an apartment? Yeah, it sounds apartment? scary. Ball python, they had asked me. Ball pythons are like really take, When no. someone says, do you take pets? I know they have something strange. That's the greatest pet that you could possibly, as a landlord, you could possibly ever want would be a ball python. They don't do anything. They don't make, they they, they eat once a week. They poop every two weeks. It, it's the sim. you have to be a moron not to be able to take care of a ball python. It's the easiest pet to, to do it, to, to take care of. You know what's the funniest thing, Dave, is when you have an apartment building with dogs and the snow melts. In the springtime, oh, and yeah. like fifty pounds of dog shit underneath <laughs> snow, <laughs> where people who would normally, you know, pick up their dog's dog yeah. crap, but it's cold, they just let the dog out. And... Do you uh, do you allow animals in your buildings? Um, I make exceptions for people. I love when people. I, I love to do this with people. They say, "Do you take dogs?" And I say, "No." And they say it's a therapy pet. And I said, "That's okay. I still don't take them." And they said, "Do you know it's against the law?" <laughs> you know, is it I, really? Yeah, but people do this to me. Yeah, it's against the law. But but I do this. Do does the dog have its license? And they're like, no. When I say, well, then it's not really technically a therapy. Right, pet. right, right. It's just it's you just making up a bullshit. Just your dog. Uh, you know, I, I I love animals, but you know what? There are a lot of people that just don't take care of their animals. And you know, I know animals. I've had houses I rented with animals ruined, the floors and the carpets and. I had to do a lot of work to the places when they moved out. I had a, I had a cat once claw through a cabinet, just like scratch, use it as scratch. I mean, wow. just, just ridiculous. Yeah, you got to take, you got to take, you know, a lot of these places will take a double security deposit. Double security, yeah. Uh, which... You need like a quadruple or something. <laughs> six, yeah. We'll take six months ahead up front, yeah. So, well. Well, let's see what else. Let's go back to the show for a second. I don't want to. I don't want to achieve anything. I wanted to say also. I, I I saw getting back to women's physique. Um, Akimi Jones really really looked good. She I really liked her Very physique good. a lot. Yep. Yeah. Um, actually, so. sorry, 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 sorry. She was the winner of the women's bodybuilding. I, I I what I wanted to say about her was that I thought she could have done women's physique and done very well. Um, she's like got that crossover appeal. Yeah. I think it's brilliant when these women do the bodybuilding division. They win that, and then they just go in and they compete in women's physique in the pro ranks. It's way easier to get your pro card in women's bodybuilding nowadays because there's only like eight people in the whole show. Yeah. So brilliant move on her part, and I think how she'll be a how great. How many women's bodybuilders, physique. female bodybuilders, was there in the show? There was um, ten. Ten. Eleven. Eleven what? girls. Ooh. One lightweight, and remember all. All the um, weight class winners get their pro card. So the one girl who did like so the Miss, Olympia, the Miss Olympia used to dole out fifty k first prize. Yeah, but think about it: the, every weight class gets a gets a pro card, and there's only one girl in the class. So the girl who was in the class was brilliant <coughs> for doing it, right? Because she yeah. she got a pro card. She didn't even look that she wasn't even in that good of conditioning. But it doesn't matter. No one there was there was no one there to challenge her. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I know it's strange. Yeah. No. Well, you know, look, I'm glad they're still keeping it around, but um, I think a lot of women's physique women should just, I'm, you know, if I work with any women's physique for competitors, I'm going to make them, do, I, I made a couple girls do it before and they got pro cards that way. It's it's, it's cheating kind of, but it's not really, I mean. Yeah, it's, not, just, it's just good planning, that's all. Yep, yep, I agree. It's like when you don't cheat on your taxes, you just have a good account. <laughs> tax, tax, not cheating. That's right, that's right. You can deduct your therapy dog. Well, if you had to rate the NPC Nationals, the, the talent pool of this year, compared to years past, would it be on a 1 to 10? Um, closer to 1 than, than wow. 5. Wow. Really? I'm just, you know, it's it's the depth here. And here's the reason why, because I, I know I just... The numbers are up. There's definitely a lot of well, people in the show. I, just, I offended a lot of people, and I'm talking about bodybuilding. 
No, that's why. That's why I was asking. That's what I meant. Board choice was off the hook. Yeah. The classic had a lot of depth, um, but in men's bodybuilding, the reason I'd say with bodybuilding is because you don't have a lot of depth, and, and like things fall out, fall off after the quality and the impressiveness falls off after, let's say, the top five generally. Versus previous years, you could get tenth, and someone would say, you know, you really a little bit tighter could have placed fourth. So it shows a lot of depth. Sure. Second, you know, the issue is um, outside of uh, depth. You don't find, you know, uh, people winning classes and you say, this guy's going into the 212s and he's going to dominate. Yeah. Or this guy's going to go into the 212s and he's going to be top eight at the Olympia. Or this guy's going to do the Open and, you know, Watch out, New York Pro. He's going to win it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just said LeBron, you said it's going to take a year off. I said, smart move. He yeah. said, get waxed. Yeah. If he was in this year's New York Pro, he'd get waxed. Well, he's smart. Like I said, and he's young, so he can do that. When you're yeah, young, well, you, you can take time yeah. off. You know. In terms of, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, where's the, you know, where's it land? Well, I think he was, you know, I was listening to an interview he did on NPC News, um, with one of the you know when he got off stage and he even said he goes eh, you know i was happy with the way i looked you know i didn't think i was as i think I, he says i think i was good enough to win the show oh but he didn't like he wasn't like saying i'm the greatest and i'm going to do this and that he goes i got work to do you know and so that was i thought a pretty honest assessment of himself you know i'm sure his dad told him the same thing but you know he was honest he's like yeah i was good enough to beat these people here today but that doesn't mean that i'm I'm ready to get on a pro stage, and I know I have work to do, and I, I like that. I thought that was very honest. Yeah, agreed. So, sometimes when you have when you can honestly assess yourself and look at yourself and make statements like that, you'll you will get better because you know you got work to do. Some of these guys they win and they're like, I'm fucking the shit. You know, I don't need to do nothing. I'm just gonna dominate now the pro ranks, and they get their ass you know handed to them. So. Good job. Okay. Look, I, congratulations. I, I, plus, you know what? It's a, it's a feel-good story. You know, everyone loves Lee Labrada. I don't think there was a single person who ever bad mouthed Lee Labrada in the sport. No. And so to see his son, you know, get the pro card and kind of carry the, the tradition of the Labrada tradition, it's a, it's like a feel-good story, you know? And I think that uh, it certainly didn't hurt him on stage to have that last name, you know? True. You know, I a lot of people have been asking me, Chris, about... I know I'm going, to, I'm going to let you go in a, in a minute because I know you got to you got to travel tomorrow early. But a lot of people have been asking me about RX Muscle merchandise. The new the two term in, in this uh, day and age now is called merch. You, have you heard that term? Of course not. Okay. Everyone calls you know the, all the YouTubers and all the uh, social media people is what merch you got. They want to know what you got to sell. And you know people watch this show. We have a lot of fans, and for years people have asked me. You know, and I've made a couple T-shirts here and there over the years, but. People always ask me, I want RX muscle clothing, I want heavy muscle radio clothing, I want this, I want that. And and I never had it. And the reason is because I don't need another job. I have enough. I have with Species Nutrition. I have my Dave Palumbo website. We we got so much going on. And my wife does all runs all the companies and everything like that. And she ships all, a lot of the stuff. Not the Species stuff, but she, she sends in all the orders. We don't need another job. So I just never did the RX muscle stuff because I had to inventory different styles and men's versus women's and and different sizes it, it's so complicated to do t- to do clothing and that's why i don't do it so i might make a t-shirt for you and me here and there but that's it but now youtube's got partnerships with a lot with, with some some uh, merchandise companies so now what you do is you upload your logos and and you can design your own clothing and it doesn't cost me anything the clothing's up there um we have so what i decided to do is start off with Heavy Muscle Radio clothing. Now, there's a great logo that Jerry Beck drew of you and myself. Um, half the our, half the, the logo is my face, and the other half is your face, and it's kind of like melded together. And it says Heavy Muscle Radio under, and it's, it's a cool logo. Everyone always says, "Oh, I love that logo. I want it on the shirt." So now you can go if you look at any of our videos, especially this one. If you look below the video on, on the YouTube channel, on the Arx Muscle YouTube channel, you'll see a little like bar. And under the that bar is our, is a, it's like a store, and you can see and it's a scroll bar. You can scroll it through it. There's a lot of different options where you can buy T-shirts, and I I picked all the high-end T-shirts that I know people like the soft fit, next level T-shirts. 
You can buy that with the logo on it. You can buy a sweatshirt, pullover sweatshirt. You can buy women's shirts, V-necks, uh, cell phone cases with our picture. If people really like want to see the, this heavy muscle radio, if they really want like the show and, 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 and they want to show support for it, you go on there and you can buy anything. Later in the week, I will then start. I will start uploading the RX Muscle logo on all these different items of clothing too, so you can get that as well. And then what we will do is we will start to hold contests or, or at least ask you guys, the listeners, for ideas of slogans that we'll put on T-shirts. Like, I think we should do a Why Cut Back, right, T-shirt? Don't you think? Yeah. Funny, I think I put uh, hashtag Why Cut Back. No, I did. No more bullshit. That's the beta Budai. Yeah, yeah oh, I get them confused. No bullshit. Why cut back and no bullshit. No bullshit. Why Cut Back? No bullshit. Why we'll cut do, back? We'll do a why cut back. We'll get we'll like fire Ca Steve Carroll. I'll do one of those t-shirts. A hashtag fire Steve Carroll. Um, what other what are, what other like uh, sayings do you and I like to you know do all the time? There's other stuff I'm sure we say. I'm sure my our listeners will. You know Viagra. That'd be a good t-shirt. You know Viagra. We can put a picture. <laughs> I gotta have someone draw a little logo, a little a character of Blackman, Vino Viagra. No, you could you could private label some wine called Vino Viagra. But you know, <laughs> it, might, it might sell. That might be a really good idea. You never know actually. what's gonna. You know what? That's the thing. Steve you will sue me. Blackman will sue me for that stealing you know, listen, this logo. It's like renting an apartment. You 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 fix something up and it's nice as hell and it's like mm -hmm. sits. And you get a shitty apartment, and you like tell someone, "Well, just you know what? We're not putting a dime into it. Just rent it as is." Right. What happened? I rent it. So you never know what people like. <laughs> you know, I mean, they could like, you know, they could like the Bina Viagra shirt more yeah. than the. True. I think hashtag Why Cut Back should be the first one. I think that would be a really good seller. I would wear it. I'm yeah. I'm 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 going to do it just so that I can buy some of these things off the site. Dave, people don't even know what the hell you're talking about with the Why Cut Back. Oh, they know. And they absolutely know why. They know the story. I'm our listeners, our listeners have been listening to us for. Remember, we're going on ten years. More is there, is February ninth. There, if, if there be ten program, years. Blackman sent me that text in two thousand thirteen. Is it been that long? Yeah, two thousand thirteen. Oh yeah, yeah. When he said you, 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 you know, that's when I, that's when I went total nuclear on him. When he yeah. said oh, you're very unappreciative, I made you. <laughs> <laughs> went in to lecture me in terms of that while other magazines have, you know, gone down to eight issues a year, we've got 12 plus of, you know, whatever, collector's issue. He must have loved the collector's issue, right? <laughs> he doesn't when even have – I don't even think they have – I think they put like one issue out a year. Now. I know, but did, did he love when you were there, the collector's issue? Yeah, but you know what the funny thing is? He, the funny thing is that he really won the battle if he really wants it because he's the only magazine left, really. There's no other magazines left. I mean, Muscle and Fitness is left, and they've kind of incorporated Flex. But in in, in the hardcore genre, everyone's out of business. Iron Man's gone, Muscle Mag, um, Flex, and Blackman's left. I mean, I think yeah, I don't know if Muscle Insider's published Well, it's like, the, it's like the own in J.C. Penny stock when all the other department stores are out of business. <laughs> like, like, it's worth, like, nothing. <laughs> Like yeah, right. It's like it's like a it's like having a, a rotary <laughs> dial. But you know what? Maybe it'll become like in vogue to like to, to, to buy magazines in, in the future because it's it, like it pe may, because people get you know what people it's love like an antique nostalgic. You know. They yeah. do. They love. Don't you want to buy use a phone where like in the old days? What are those old phones like you see in the old the rotary phones? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna no I'm gonna, pre rotary pre rotary. Oh, the little like ones where you have to talk into the into the uh, opening. You know, it's like and you have to like click the thing like a few times. <laughs> click 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 click. click. Operator, give me a, give me a, uh, Chris to see those. Blackman in, in Syosset, New York. No, here's a, here's a great idea for Blackman. This is what he should do. Forget trying to put out new stuff. It, it's, it's useless because you're not going to keep up. It's a, online is where it's at. He should just print vintage magazines, like old stories, like from like 20, 30 years ago. And because you can't <laughs> find that anywhere, that stuff. That's, he probably has those in, in the file somewhere. He can just print old shit. People might want to watch that to get the history of the sport. Maybe you know that yeah. might be something that's uh, actually that's what the Weeder magazine, that's what the AMI magazine should do. They should does he still have the Does he still have the office where you were? I don't know. No, I think they had moved across the street or something. Like I was going to say because I wonder if he does. He does he still have the Hummer? I'm sure he probably does. 
Ar- Arnold, the, Arnold, you know. Can't, yeah. Can't well, get the Hummer. No, because like, I always picture him going to the New York uh, 7-Eleven. I'm sure he still does that. I'm sure he still does that. Every morning. In the freezing. I, well, I heard it was snowing up there. Was it snowing in Maine, too? Uh, yeah, it did. We got a couple hours, a uh, couple hours, a couple inches of snow when I went. You know what? When we got a couple inches of snow, and when I left town, I went out and bought all kinds of ice melt and sand because I I figured it was going to, that's what happens a lot of times when yeah. I leave. Something something happens True. with the weather. It was it's, it was 85 here. Though. Well, you know, you were in Florida, so you know, it was beautiful yeah. here. Well, you know what's bizarre, Dave? I would Tuesday and Wednesday... Uh, I was here, and it was like 88 in Miami. Wow. Thursday, it was 62, and I had to put on a, on a jacket. <laughs> but if I was in Maine... You would have had a winter coat 62. on, a snorkel. No, if it was 62, I'd, I'd be out and about with no jacket. Yeah, I, I was freezing in, at 60 degrees here, and I'm, I, I completely, my skin, as they say here, has thinned out quite a bit. Yeah, I feel like a snake. But anyway, I know you gotta you gotta get back to uh, trying to get at least an hour of sleep before you go home tomorrow. Have a safe flight, Chris. Uh, thank you for the uh, NPC Nationals update, uh, and uh, you know we'll see. Maybe next year we'll have a new promoter. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, <laughs> and on that note, till next week. Remember, with Heavy Muscle Radio, the truth hurts. Good night, everyone.